right, we'll start in the back. Draymond, obviously the entirety of the fourth quarter didn't go the way you wanted it to, but can you take away some things that you did late in that game when you kind of got going and carried them into the next contest? Yeah, um, just make an impact on the game. Uh, that's what I do. You know, I impact winning, and I did that down the stretch, and I need to carry that over into game five. Oh. Was, what was the switch? How, how did that change? I think I made an impact on the game the whole game. I think you can get caught up in every, you know, everything that's going around. But, you know, if those that watch and understand basketball, I made an impact the entire game. So I don't think there was a switch um, last couple of minutes. Ron? Ron Krejcik, San Francisco Chronicle. How, as, as impressive as it is what Steph's been doing, how conscious are you and the team of making sure he has enough scoring help and making sure he doesn't you know, have to carry too much of a burden, I guess. I don't, I don't think anyone goes into it thinking, oh, man, you have to make sure Steph doesn't carry too much of a burden. I think, you know, you just go into it with the goal of doing your part. And, you know, if everyone does their part, you give yourself a chance to win a game. So I don't think it's, you know, you go in thinking that specific. Um, but you just go in and make your impact however you may. Jay on the left. You, you've made it very clear how much you respect Jason Tatum's game. Uh, what do you view as a challenge for him in this series against your defense in the NBA Finals for the first time? And kind of what does it take and what, is it, what does it test for a young guy in that situation for the first time? I mean, it's tough. You know, you, you're experiencing something for the first time. Um, you know, I think he's handled it well. You know, he's maybe not shot the ball as well as he'd like or everyone else would like. But overall, I think he's been playing well. And, you know, that's why it's a 2-2 series, um, you know, coming back for game five. So I think he's I think he's handling it all extremely well. He's, you know, he's taking what the defense gives him. And, you know, that's that's what great players do, I think. But I think he's doing a good job. Up front here. Draymond, what, might be a bit of an oddly worded question, but when did you fully grasp your importance to this team? Um, I know you, know, you guys had that seven-game series against the Clippers, and then you guys went on to win championships. When did you fully grasp how important you were to this team and how important what you bring every night is to this team? I think it's evolved over time. I don't think there was one specific instance where I'm like, oh, man, I'm really important to this team. I think just over the course of time, you kind of see it grow. Uh, and see, you know, your importance, your impact, uh, what you bring to the floor. And then can that team, you know, over the course of time, you realize, like, oh, man, this team doesn't operate the same if I don't do X or if I don't, you know, do Z. And so I think um, I think for me it's just been a, a, a consistent process. And I think over the course of time, you know, those things change. You know, some some sometimes you need this. Some, you know, one year you may need that. Uh, but I think, you know, when you're doing it for so long, um, sometimes those things change. John, back left. Uh, Draymond, John Corrales, Boston Sports Journal. Three, two or three games left here. How much of this is finding some sort of adjustment to make and how much of it is just two teams, whoever does what they do better comes out on top? I think anytime you get to this point uh, in the season, you know, there's, there's not many ad huge adjustments you can make. Um, like I've said before, they know who you are, you know who they are. You're not going back to reinvent the wheel. You're not going back to change your um, playbook. You're not going back and change your personnel. You know, so I think in understanding that, uh, you have to do what you do to the best of your ability. Um, both teams are attempting to do that. Uh, I think, you know, we pose some challenges for them that they have to overcome. They, they pose some challenges for us that we have to overcome. So. You know, it's no surprise to us uh, and being here and, you know, they do the things that they do well and you try, you, you have to try to combat those. I think we've done that at times in this series and at times in this, as, in this series, they, they've got the better of us. So uh, it's just a matter of who can do that more consistently. That's who will win the series. Question on the right. 
Um, Draymond, um, Deniz Aksoy from Esport Turkey. So I, my question is, um, I'm coming from Turkey, from Europe. So you have lots of fans in Turkey who are waking up at 4 a.m. to watch you and they're supporting you a lot. So my question is for them, like, what would you like to say as the most remarkable moment during this NBA Finals until now? Uh, the most remarkable moment in these finals, I think, was going on the road and winning game four for us. You know, anytime you can go on the road and win in a hostile environment, it's always a great feeling. Um, you know, to, to see Steph Curry put on the performance that, that he put on, I think, you know, that's one of those performances that, you know, obviously you have to win championship, but if you, you win the finals, you know, that's one of those performances that you look back in history like, man, I remember this performance. I remember I was when that happened. Uh, and, and, and you kind of remember the plays and all how it went down. So um, I'd have to say game four. Alex? Yeah, Alex Espinosa with 95-7 the game. Uh, Draymond, I know Rick Celebrini spent, you know, all-star break with you in Cabo. How important has he been for your whole team? And uh, did you know he was a good defender, you know, when he was playing soccer back in the day? Have you ever seen his clips or anything like that? I have seen some clips, uh, Rick playing soccer. Um, pretty physical which is no surprise. That's how he is in his work here. Um, not necessarily that he's physical, uh, but, you know, just the demeanor you carry and the aggression that you carry and the tone that you speak with. Um, but he's been extremely important uh, to, to what we've done here and just in really building out a performance team. Uh, and I think for us as players, you kind of see the different roles, and it's been great to see. Like, you see uh, what he's done in the training room with Yoder and Danny and Jerry and, um, and Long. And then you also see what he's done in, in the weight room with Bergie uh, and KB and Dave, uh, AD, you know. And so I think he's done an incredible job of just being a leader uh, and, and building out the way he has. And then obviously he's a genius uh, when it comes to the body and how the body operates. I'm not sure I've ever been around someone that knows more about the body and uh, what, A, you need to get out of your body, but also what you need to do to put yourself in, in, in the best position to peak when, when it's time. I think, you know, that's uh, one of the things I think has been great with Rick is, you know, he's taught myself, he's taught Steph, um, you know, he, Clay, he's taught us, you know, as our career has gone on, how to get your body ready to go when it needs to be ready. And that's, you know, that process is different for everyone. That process is different, um, you know, if it's one day in between the game. That process is different if it's a back-to-back. -back. That process is different if you got two or three days in between the game. And I think they've done a great job of helping us understanding that. Last couple, Ron on the left here. I believe tomorrow is the three-year anniversary of, of Clay's ACL injury, the game against Toronto. I'm just hoping you could reflect briefly on sort of the emotion of that night and how crazy. No, it's unnecessary. We're well, but just sort of how, cra yeah, how we're crazy it's been moment. what he's gone through to get here. Yeah, we're here in this moment. Um, there's no need to talk about some something that's unfortunate that happened three years ago. We're, we're here in this moment. We're going to stay in this moment. We're going to think positive thoughts, and we're going to move forward. He's overcome since then. To be yeah, here. it's been great to see, uh, you know, where he is and, and you know, the level that he's back playing at. But it's no need for us to talk about moments that we don't want to relive from three years ago. Thank you. Last question, Melissa. Melissa Roland, Fox Sports. Hey, Draymond. Hey, um, Melissa. You see Clay uh, yesterday when he comes back from the game, jump in the ocean. Um, and he talks about how that, like, refreshes him. But what do you do when you get back from a five-and-a-half-hour flight to just sort of, like, recite yourself before such a big game? I uh, just I try to get my body moving after the flight, um, get a sweat, get some work in, and spend time with my family. I think, you know, that's, that's it for me. I think the ocean is very refreshing. I'm not a – hop in the ocean in San Francisco or anywhere around San Francisco type person, but I absolutely do love the ocean. It's, it's definitely refreshing. And, you know, that's, that's his safe haven, uh, and he enjoys that. So it's, it's absolutely uh, great to see him indulging in what he enjoys and what helps him be him. Chris, what you got for me? Thank you, Dre. Chris Haynes, Yahoo Sports. Uh, Dre, when you think about – the run you guys have been in, been on throughout this whole entire period, um, your growth, particularly, 
you know, coming into this league and establishing yourself as one of the top defensive players. What was the model? Who was the model you looked at um, to get to this point to say, this, this is the way that I can establish myself as a force? Was there anybody you looked at and, and, and modeled your game after? I, well, I think, I think for us as a team, there was no specific model. Um, I think if we looked at anybody who we would more closely compare ourselves to or try to model ourselves after is the San Antonio Spurs, but they're completely different in how they went about it. Uh, and so I don't think there's a direct comparison to us. And I think that's why you see the, the league has changed now in a way that it never has before. I think that's in large part due to the brand of basketball that we've played and had success with. I think the model for me, um, I think I, for me, I watched a bunch of different guys uh, and, and what they brought to the table, but ultimately understanding that there was no guy uh, in particular like me and that I wanted to try to create a lane for other guys in this league that had not, be cre had not been created before. Um, and I think I've done a pretty good job of that. But uh, there was definitely some guys that I took things away from, you know. Um, and over the course of my career, I've still continued to watch and try to take things away from those guys. You know, uh, when you look at, you know, and I think for me, um, you know, I studied Boris Diaw so much early on in my career and just how he moved the ball and, you know, how he used DHOs and, and, and more so than a specific action, how he outthought the opponent uh, was very special to me. And, you know, when I look at myself on the defensive end, I've tried to take things from a lot of guys. I've tried to uh, incorporate some, some things that Dennis Rodman did to have success. Uh, Kirk Thomas and, and Chuck Hayes and how they were undersized, but the way that they guarded on the block. Uh, you know, two of the um, best post defenders at their size that I've ever seen. Like, you couldn't back down either one of those guys. You know, I've tried to add that to my game on that side of the ball, but ultimately understanding that I, I you know, I didn't want to be a carbon copy of anybody. You know, I wanted to uh, come in and and make people say, who is the next Draymond? Not, uh, man, can Draymond be like this guy? Or can Draymond? No, I didn't, I didn't want that for me. I didn't think there was a path uh, to success for me to go and try to em emulate someone else. I thought my path uh, to success would be based on what I can bring to the table. And <clears throat> if, if, if there was something that I could recreate uh, in our situation. And so that was kind of the biggest thing for me. Thanks, Draymond. Bro. We'll have Andrew Wiggins in here next.